Welcome back to the beautiful fields of Perthshire. Look at that for a view. Well, I'm out on my own again. Simon's busy, Pete's busy, Albert's vanished, and uh, and uh, Martin was maybe supposed to be coming with me, and he's ill, so get well soon, Martin. Um, best of all, well, not best of all, because that's bad, always nice to have some company, but the great thing about today is there is virtually no wind, which has been the first time in like two weeks, it's just been constant wind, nothing more annoying, well that and rain when it comes to metal detecting. So I am back out, I'm back out on the new permission, which has produced lots and lots of different things, lots of interesting military items, we've had um, some great coins, and a suspected Roman Cistercius, and also historically, about 150 years ago, there were Roman coins found on this field. So, um, so yeah, we're just going to have, well, say we, I, I'm just going to have a hunt, although you'll be there too. So let's go and see if there's any treasures to be found. I didn't think it would take long to get my first target, and indeed, one minute. And a coin contender already. Let's put the big numbers on. I keep forgetting. As ever, I'm on the Jethro program. And uh, I am... Um, right, we're out. And I'm also on the 11-inch coil, which I've stuck with. This field was really, really sticky last time we were in it. So I decided to just play it safe. And also, I put a new battery in my pinpointer. Oh, I don't believe it. I think we're in with silver. We are. We've got a silver on the first again. It's a thruppence. First hole silver coin. Cannot make it up. It's looking a bit grotty. But that should clean up. Who have we got? Oh, it's gorgeous, George. George V, first hole. Boom. I mean, look, let me show you how far I've walked. Oh, can't get the zoom sorted out. There we go. Look, there's the edge of the field right there. I've just walked in a straight line from there to here. And we're straight in with a silver. You beauty. You know what? I think this is going to be a good day. What a start. So it is a little bit grotty, this coin. This part of the field's very, very boggy. So, um... So it's probably a lot of standing water throughout the year. But I think that will clean up pretty well. Um, oh, definitely gorgeous, George. Right, back to you in a second. What a start. And here we are. It is a threepence, a threepence, and it's got the date of 1919. So the official end of the Great War, the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, happened in 1919. And therefore, it is you-know-who. Gorgeous George. Now it's pre-1920, which also means that it is 92.5% silver. But it always amazes me the different way the silver coins can come out. Sometimes really bright and shiny, other times black, and sometimes two-toned like this one. And it's a half pint to start the day. Having got off to my lightning start with silver on the first hole in the first minute, um, I've only had in the last 15 minutes... Half of a horseshoe, but now, pretty nice, all the way up to 95. Now, it could be a coin, but I think it's maybe going to be a bit of brass or a bottle top. But two coins in the first 15 minutes would be excellent. I think we've got a bit of copper pipe right there. Yep, we do indeed. Piece of copper. Probably a water pipe. Eagle-eyed John, I think I might have another eyes-only find. Can you see it? How about now? I think you can. Clay pipe, I think. And it is. It is a little bit of a clay pipe. It's the stem. No maker, though. No decoration. But still, a bit of clay pipe, tobacco pipe, probably... Date-wise, maybe 150, 
a couple of hundred years old, but I think the first tobacco started coming into the UK in the 1500s, maybe the early 1600s at the earliest. Originally very expensive, it then became very cheap. So you can date the pipes by how big the bowl is. The very early ones are tiny because it was so expensive. By the Victorian period, they're massive. Some of them are this size because tobacco was cheap. But don't smoke, kids. It's bad for you. Two seconds later, another eyes only find. Looks like it's got writing on it. Graven? Craven. Craven something and company. So, no idea what that is. A thing. If you know, comment below. I think we might have our first button of the day. Hmm, maybe not. Is it a coin? Hmm, it could be. If it is, it's an unusual size. Okay, I'll give it a wee rubber dub and get back to you. If I found that on my Roman site, which is, well, in a different location, but if I did find that on my Roman site, I would think that is a 4th century Roman coin. But, cannot see any detail on it. It's a bit misshapen, it looks like it's made of bronze. And I don't know, there could be a head on there, but I can't see anything. But if you do, then let me know in the comments below. Well, one to show the museum again, just in case. What do you reckon to this then? Now, I just redug another hole. A hole that either Simon or Martin have dug the last time we've been out here. And in the hole was this. Now, they haven't missed it. They just, uh, well, sorry, they haven't dug it up and put it back. They've missed it. But what is it? It does look like it's got a bit of age to it. It's clearly broken. I mean, could it be part of a key? The little teeth would be down here. Could that be part of a key? Or is it something else? But it definitely looks like it's got some age to it. Not a great target, this one, but something's just fallen out the side wall. Right there. And it is... Oh, it's not a coin. Because it's too fat. Is it a ring or a weight? It's hollow, so it's a ring. Ah. No. No, I think it's an olive. For, uh, well, I don't know, it's always hard to tell. How do you tell a ring from an olive for plumbing? Obviously I had a bit of copper pipe off this field, so if there's copper pipe, there's probably going to be olives. But is there any decoration? That's probably what we'd decide, isn't it? And, if I zoom you in a touch, there's nothing there. So who knows, it could be a little copper um, finger ring, or it might be an olive. This was a relatively shallow target, probably only four inches down, but now that it's out... Sounds okay. 77, mid-tone. A bit of copper, probably. Or maybe a bit of lead. Am I going blind? Stone. Oh, there we go. Ah, it's a buckle. Oh, it's a nice decorated one. There you go. It's a wee flowery sort of horse buckle. Horse tack. Probably would have been bright gold in colour when it was made. It might actually be brass rather than copper, but yeah. And date-wise, probably 100, maybe 200 years old at a push. A bit of flashy horse decoration. This one's a very sweet target. An ear blowing 88 to 89. And we're out. Straight away. Ah, oh, I can see it. It's a buckle. Oh, might be military. Yes. Well, that's interesting. What oh, is it? It's a hinge type thing. Oh, I'm not really sure what that is. It's definitely, yeah, I think it is. I think it's a 
maybe even for like a suspenders or something, you know, like uh, braces is what I mean. Give it a wee rub. It looks to be plain and it's kind of been squashed on the side. So there would have been a, an equal space through the middle there. It is quite wide though, so I'm thinking more animal than human. It's quite a wide brace, isn't it? But who knows? So let me know in the comments below. I'm going to guess 100, 150 years old, but let me know. And 82, 83 this time. Going up to 84. Busy field. But that's good. I'm getting a few relics and getting a few items. I'm sure there'll be a few more coins somewhere in here. Maybe even in this very hole. Let's have a wee pinpoint and see. It's probably at the front of the hole. No, it's not. It's right in the middle. Okay, I'm going to turn you off for a wee second. That was a deep one, about 12 inches down. It's a piece of copper, but uh, there's more of it in the hole, so I'm going to need to dig that out as well. This one was an ear blower, just under the surface, came through anywhere between 79 and 99. It was all over the place, but I believe this is part of a parasol or an umbrella. This is where all the spokes would sit. Um, so maybe to either keep the rain off in Scotland or the intense sunshine. Another deep one, about eight to nine inches down. Now sounds pretty good. 79, 80. Another bit of copper pipe. Oh, I moved it. Oh, what's that? Oh, that looks like, it looks oval anyway. Is it? Is it hollow? No, it's not hollow. Hmm. That's weird. Well, it's definitely got an edge on it, but it's not hollow. Might be a watch. Possibly. Let's give it a wee gentle tease. Right, it's definitely a thing. 100% something going on there. Hmm. What is this? Thanks as well. Look, Les had just sent me some new styles of pick. What is that? It's definitely a a pattern on there, I would say. 100% there's a pattern on there. Right, I'm going to give this a proper clean up off camera and then get back to you, just so I don't damage anything. That is a very interesting little thing. So it looks like it's baby. I mean, it could be a case for a watch, but it would be an unusual shape. You can see it's pressed metal, so it's not massively old. It's probably going to be less than a few hundred years old. In fact, look, I can see there, there's a hinge on the side. So it's been something that you could open and close. So whether it's for maybe like a pillbox or whether it's um, a locket for a picture or um, something to do with cigarettes or, or uh, as I say, a clock or a watch. I'm not entirely sure, but there's definitely a monogram on there. A C or a G, I think it's a C. And probably an H over the top, I would say. So HC or CH. So let me know in the comments below. But it's going to be less than 300 years old. It's probably going to be around about, you know, I would guess maybe 1820 through to about 1900. So not massively old, but let me know. Nice find. I like that a lot. This one was like a bag of spanners and there is definitely some kind of subliminal messaging going on because yet again I've got another bit of a box iron. So an old Victorian iron that you would heat up on the range and put it in this sort of metal and wooden box to iron your clothes. Um, so yeah, you need to do more housework. Oh and date wise, it'll be Victorian 1837 to 1900 give or take. I'm thinking this is going to be a button, 74. First button of the day. It is, it's a four holer. With a maker or markings on it as well. If it's legible. Eh, no. Nope. Can't quite make that out, PR something. 
PR something BR. So it's a thing. Oh, I think it says Perth at the bottom. It does. P E R T H, which is just a couple of miles away. And uh, that is the, the capital of the region of Perthshire. It's also where Perth in Australia gets its name from because when they created Perth, or when they created a new town in Australia, the then governor of Australia was a Murray from Scotland, from Perthshire in fact, from Scotland. And he decided to name it Perth after where he came from. Brilliant. Oh, and probably about 100, 150 years old again. An ear blower. 89.90 and the soil here is very sandy. I'm hoping this is going to be a George III because I would hope that preservation will be pretty good. It's not a coin. I think I just saw it. I think it's a tractory part. But we're right up on the hill. Simon and I were up here briefly the other day until the wind drove us mad. There's something. Oh. Oh, I saw a silver edge there, but I think it's some sort of bottle top or stopper or something. Yeah, I think it might be. So yeah, we've not really done the top of the hill, which is a great big sandy mound. What have we got? I think it is some sort of tractory related thing. It's just because it's got a silver edge that's thrown me. Maybe it's stainless steel. Is it hollow? Nope. Just a dimple. Hmm. It's a thing. Is it threaded inside here? No. Curious. Well, I've no idea what that is, but as ever, if you know, comment below. A definite one for filming. And a screamer of a target, as you might be able to hear. 88, 89. Oh, I can see something. Right there. Ah, it's a coin, I think. It is. I think it's a coin. I think it's a coin. It kind of looks copper. It does look copper. What a weird way it's gone. Oh, I might be struggling to get detail off this. Well, I was hoping that uh, we'd get decent condition coins out of here. Not sure about that one. Right, I'll give this a wee rub-a-dub and get back to you. But it is coin number two. It's actually better than it initially looked. The bendy thumb wins again. So you can see the portrait, or the, sorry, the silhouette of Britannia. But even better, there's a date at the bottom. 1773. So a half penny and 13 years into the reign of the third longest reigning monarch, Mr Potato Head, George III, so you'll see him start to fade in now, and you can just make out on the left, Georgius, so it would have said Georgius 111 Rex, George III King, and a halfpenny in 1770, what did I say, 3, 6, 1773 I think it is, um, that would have been a few pints of beer in anyone's money. Brilliant. Lovely coin. Not bad condition at all. I'm right up on the top of the hill and I've got a cracker of a signal. But look at the soil here. I call it soil. It's sand. Pure sand. And watch as I go down the hill. Look at the colour change. So we're basically on a great big sandy hill. Surrounded, well, in every, di in every direction you can see for miles. So... In some ways I could see why people would live up here, but at the same time I'm thinking, well, be a wee bit windy. 86. Easy digging, I'm sure. And out on the first. It's actually fairly amazing the farmer's able to grow anything in here. Well, we've got a silver. It's an absolute cracker. Look at that. Barely a bit of taint on it. Hardly any discoloration. Oh, it's 1901. It's the year uh, Victoria died. Let's give it just a wee scoosh. There is a bit of sand on it. Well, that is a beautiful coin. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, in fact, it's maybe got a hole in it. I think it has. I think someone's pierced it or tried to. 
But there you go. Maybe they tried to pierce it after the Queen died to wear it as a little memento. But Victoria, by the grace of God, Queen of the Britons, Defender of the Faith and Empress of India, second longest ruler in British history, after Elizabeth II. And a pretty small woman, I think she was only like five foot one, took the throne at 18 or thereabouts, and, uh, well, the empire under her grew to its largest. What was it, one third of the planet, or was it two thirds of the planet? But how times change. We have another ear blower. I'm doing this without a microphone. I hope it's okay. I have to take my microphone off because it's raining. And my microphone is not waterproof. It's an ear blowing 90, not far from the silver. Not far at all from the silver, but deeper. One more and then we'll get the pin pointer. Right, maybe it's in the front wall. Oh, just dropped my just dropped my microphone and my receiver on the ground. I'll get them in a wee minute. No, it's still down there. It's a deepen. It's out. It's out and it's round. Well, it's round and it's big. And it's green. Oh, what is that? It's got a hole in the middle. Ah, oh, is it lead? Oof, oh, it might be. Kind of got a little bit of bend in it. Don't worry, I'm not going to snap it in half in case it's an ancient relic. It's a... Probably a horse decoration, but made of lead or pewter. Which usually means it's older. Because the later ones were made of brass. So that's a nice wee find. Fairly deep, probably about 8 inches. And date-wise, probably 1700s, I would say, maybe into the very early 1800s. Nice find, I'm happy with that. Another without the microphone until this wee bit of rain passes. Pretty decent, 85, 86. I wouldn't say it's a coin, though. Well, no, I don't think it is. A bit of lead or copper. Thimble? Nope, that was a bit of mud. Shaped like a thimble. It's in my hand. What's that? Stone, I think. There's something. What's this? And that feels very heavy. Very, very heavy. Possibly like a bit of bronze. And it is a bit of bronze. Just again, another piece of uh, of metal working. Someone's been around here with a little forge, maybe. But could be any age, maybe even thousands of years old. Microphone is back on and hopefully working. A wee chirpy 88. And the rain is almost off. Kind of. Yet again, not forecast. Not till about 6 or 7 o'clock tonight, so... It's about 6 or 7 hours early. As is often the case with the weather forecast in this country. The better the technology gets, the worse the forecast gets. Well, I was going to say, that looks quite green, and it is. Is it a wee doorknob? It is a wee doorknob. In fact, it's a very substantial little doorknob. Probably a drawer pull, but looking at the size of it. But yeah, very nice. Probably 100, 200 years old at most. This signal was utter junk. It was a 60, but it was terrible. I just dug it because I haven't had a target for a wee while. And it's a coin. What is it, though? Well, it's got a shield on it. Looking at the colour, it's probably going to be pre-decimal. Might be an early Queen Elizabeth II. Possibly a shilling or a sixpence. It is. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it is pre-decimal. It's one shilling. One shilling. They always go this very distinctive brown colour. 
There's a date there. 1963. Oh, there you go. I haven't had one of these in a while. It is an Elizabeth II shilling. So until decimalisation, there was 240 pence to the pound. So a shilling was 12 pence. And uh, this is an early-ish Queen Elizabeth II. She was... I think she took the throne in 1952. So she's 11 years on the throne at this point, but the coins, unfortunately, no mo no longer made from silver. It's cupra nickel. That's why it goes this horrible brown way. But you can see that it's a Scottish issue. You can see the rampant lion of Scotland in the centre. And uh, alongside the unicorn, that's one of our two symbols. And symbols of the monarchy. Brilliant. Great little find. Coin number three, I think. Maybe even four. Another screamer. Absolute ear blower. 99. It's either got to be a bottle top or a Bronze Age axe head. And I don't see a Bronze Age axe head. Could be a big bit of brass as well. Although I'm not seeing anything giant, to be honest. Well, it's green and it looks like a coin. How on earth can that be a 99? That is unreal. It's the highest readout I've ever had, a, had on a coin. Well, it's copper. I mean, maybe it was just shallow. It is a chunky little coin. And hopefully, with this nice soil here, although as you can see, it is a bit darker down here, maybe I'll get some detail off it. Back to you in a moment. Incredibly frustrating when this happens. The back, I can't really get anything off that at all. The other side, well, there's possibly a head there looking to the left-hand side, but very, very difficult to tell. Yeah, there is possibly a head there, but I really don't know. Could be Georgian, could be European even. Um, If you know, then comment below. I don't think it's Roman, but it's a very chunky little coin. And a very high readout, which makes me think it might not be of this country. Because that would be very, very high. So if you can see anything on there that I'm missing, then let me know in the comments below. But it is another coin. This one wasn't that amazing sounding. Better now, it's out. 82, 83. Don't see anything. Must be small. <gasps> oh. Oh, I think it's silver. It is silver. Oh, it might be Roman. Oh, it might be Roman. It, it looks like a coin. Definitely looks like a coin. That's a coin. Look, I can see a letter. Look, there's an eye or something there. Zoom you in a bit. That is a coin. If that is a coin, that's surely going to be Roman. Surely going to be Roman. Let's see. Oh, it's an absolute cracker. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is a Roman denarii, 100%. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, who is it? Oh, it's Hadrian. That's Emperor Hadrian. That is Emperor Hadrian, second century. The man who built the wall. Well, not personally, but he got some other people to do it for him. What a find. And I've no one to shout to. Damn! <laughs> yes! What a find! What a find! Oh, it's absolutely stunning! Absolutely stunning coin! Sometime between about 122 and 140 AD! What a coin! Unbelievable! Uh, that, folks, is a coin of absolute beauty 
So you can see, I think it says Hadrianus, which is Hadrian. Then it says AVG, which is Augustus. Well, in fact, no, it actually says Augustus. That's unusual. And normally it's AGV and then Imp and various other little uh, phrases. But that is a Roman silver coin of the Emperor Hadrian. A little bit green on the edges in places. Maybe it's not pure silver. It wasn't a great signal, I'm not going to lie. Did I film the signal? I can't remember if I did, but... Well, now that it's out, it's, a, it's an ear-blowing 84, but it's, it certainly didn't sound like that in the ground. Maybe on its edge. Um, look at the sun just came out at the right time. So, Hadrian is famous for the construction of the largest Roman military site in the whole of the United Kingdom, Hadrian's Wall, which is named after him. So he commissioned its construction in 122 AD. He was the adopted son of the Roman Emperor Trajan, Trajan's Column in Rome, named after him. And uh, Hadrian decided that he wanted to change things around. He didn't want the empire to be expansionist as it had been before invading places like modern-day Germany, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria. And uh, he also decided to throw up a boundary in the north of what we now call the United Kingdom. Um, there was also another reason for doing it. Uh, England, as we now call it, had been conquested by the Romans. The tribes were largely subdued. And there were legions who weren't doing very much. And lazy legionnaires sometimes had a habit of overthrowing emperors and making their generals new Caesars. So Hadrian decided to put them to work and he devised and partly designed Hadrian's Wall, which is now entirely across the north of England between roughly Cumbria, Carlisle and Newcastle to the east, which uh, actually terminates at a place called Wall's End, which is very appropriate, the end of the wall. Um, and it's 80 Roman miles long, 73 miles in modern measurements. And originally it was between about 12 and 16 feet in height when it was built. What he did is he split the legions up and three legions were responsible each for their own section of wall. But incredibly, they built that wall in six years. The western side was originally built in turf and then they later added it in stone. But along it they built roads, they built forts, they built watchtowers, hundreds and hundreds of military installations to look out to the barbarian north. But it wasn't a solid barrier. There were 80 mile castles and each mile castle had a gateway. So it was very much a permeable barrier. And that is a stunning coin. I don't know what is on the reverse. There's a figure possibly with a cornucopia over their shoulder which is a horn of plenty. They've got a big sort of palm leaf, which is probably relates to uh, peace or prosperity. And then you've got C O. There'll be an S underneath the uh, the green bit. One one one. So that's like his third term as uh, a a particular role that he would have had within basically the the government. So that'll be able to I'll be able to date that probably to the exact year. Now interestingly. I'm actually within eyesight of a Roman fort on uh, the other side of the river from me. I can actually see it from where I'm standing. Not quite a lie down, but a very excited, very happy, just taking the view. I wish I could show you the scenery. I wish I could show you the Roman fort in the distance because um, I wonder if there's been a settlement here. As I say, I've discovered online with some research that there were actually Roman coins found. Well, I say the, this field, but it's actually the field immediately next door, which is only about 50 metres away. They are found about 150 years ago. And on the subject of Roman coins, you may well remember that I told you that there had been a Roman coin, silver coin hoard, discovered in Perthshire uh, about two to three weeks ago. Well, you never guess. I was in the supermarket and someone sort of tapped me on the shoulder and said, John! I said, yes, and we got chatting. He said, oh, I know your channel, The Scottish Detectorist. I said, oh, well, that's amazing, thanks very much. And he said, um, you, you've heard of me as well. 
I'm one of the two people who found the Roman silver coin hoard. So I couldn't believe it. Talk about a small world. About three days having, after just posting the video, mentioning that it had happened. And he showed me a few pictures. Wow. Unbelievable. Over 300 Roman silver coins from the, the, uh, the first century, second century kind of era. Some of them just like the day they were made. Bright, bright silver. Stunning coins. A few of them green. Um, and uh, just incredible. He said the archaeologists came out. They carried out a very detailed excavation. Uh, they found quite a number of other coins. They were able to learn so much about where the coins had been placed and so on. And obviously I'm not going to tell you any details, including the finders. That's up to them. But uh, it shows you that there is a lot happening in Perthshire, especially with the Romans. Unbelievable. Absolutely made up. Well, I'm going to have to spread out from this spot and see if I can find any more. Oh, and also, this is the field that produced what I think is a great big bronze cistercius. So I reckon it is now. Um, two Roman coins off this field. Phenomenal. Uh, that is where the uh, the Roman silver came from. I'm spiralling round, working my way out. Uh, I dug a target over there, a little bit of copper. Right here, really, really faint target. And I think I've just unearthed a coin. And it looks modern. Poor, poor signal again. But I think that one was definitely on its edge. Uh, not looking amazing, to be honest. Oh, well, actually, maybe not too bad. Right, let's give it a wee brush. It looks quite stable. Not going to wet it, but give it a wee rub. Then we'll get the bendy thumb on it. And it is actually a very nice wee coin. George VI, I do believe. Maybe from around the Second World War either. And it is an absolute cracker, actually. Well, I didn't see that coming. Glad I cleaned that up on camera. I've actually made it worse, but... I'll zoom you in a bit. I think I got this exact same year. The last time I was out, 1938. It is a halfpenny, ship's halfpenny. You can see the Golden Hind, as it was called. And uh, you can see George the Sixth. So the ship, as I mentioned before, is the ship that Sir Francis Drake used to circumnavigate the world in 1570, 1580. And George the Sixth there, looking to the left, the late Queen Elizabeth's father, and the grandfather of the present king, Charles the Third. Well, here's a fourth target. 76. Bit of copper, bit of lead. We're out. Quite shallow again. There's something green. Is it a ring? It might be again. A ring. This one looks a bit more ring-like, if that's the right way to say it. Is it decorated anywhere? No, I don't think so. Again, it's quite stable, so I'll give it a wee, a wee rub-a-dub. So that's the second of this kind of thing that I've got off this field. This one, though, has got a lot more greenishness to it. You know how I often say that you can tell something is kind of old because of the colour of it. That one's much more oldy looking, if that's a phrase. So, could it be a finger ring? It's definitely bigger than the last one. I could put that on my pinky, but I don't want to in case I can't get it off. But do let me know in the comments below. Is it an olive, or is it actually a finger ring? Let me know. Again, there in the centre, right there, that's where the Hadrian came from. Working my way out, doing my spiral. And uh, this is a near blower. Possibly a coin. Another silver one. Certainly louder and deeper than the last. Maybe in the wrong place slightly. Nope, we're out. 
We're out and we're still at an 85. No. Well, it's big and it's diamond shaped. And it's got a few wee holes in it. But is it an ancient Roman relic? Or is it fairly modern? I think the answer is it's fairly modern, unfortunately. Well, I don't know exactly what it is. Clearly it's had mounting points on the back. Maybe a bit of furniture decoration or something, but not massively old, I don't think. A couple of hundred years at best. And from about 14 inches, another box iron. I don't believe it. What is going on? Not sure exactly what this is off of, but clearly made by D and W Gibbs. Made in probably England or Great Britain. Oh no, it is Great Britain. There it is there. Um, and it looks like it says patent pending. So whatever it was, they thought they were onto a good thing. Well, listen to this one. An ear blowing 8990 sounded absolute junk, barely a whisper. And it's either going to be a massive coin, which I doubt, or it's maybe part of a pocket watch. Maybe. Well, it's not hollow. No, maybe not. Hmm. What is this? Well, it's big and heavy, that's for sure. Let's dig out the back. Is it hollow? No, it's not, but it's got a little fixing in the middle. So, unfortunately, it's not some ancient Roman relic. Because that just looks too modern to me. Ugh, that's a shame. Thought I was onto something good there. Well, it is still nice. Albeit it's not particularly old. Probably less than a few hundred years, I would say, looking at it. But it's very nicely... Decorated, give it a wee gentle rub a dub, and there you go. It's some sort of little boss or little decorative fitting. Again, it might be horse related, could be off a piece of furniture. And again, I think probably in the last 100 to 200, 250 year sort of time scale, I would say. But if you know, comment below. And another doorknob, albeit a little bit squished. We have another coin. Didn't sound great yet again, possibly also on its edge. Now there is a Britannia there. You'll start to see her coming through with her huge ball gown on. And this is an identifiable coin. Initially I thought it was going to be George III, but it is earlier, considerably earlier. It is William III. Now you can just make out at the bottom corner you can see an L for Gavillimus and you can make out the head looking to the right hand side with those two little tassels coming in just at the back of the head. And this is William III who seized the throne in the Glorious Revolution, 1688, with his wife Mary, Mary Stuart. And he was Elector, eh, sorry I was going to say Elector of Hanover, no he wasn't, he was William of Orange, so he was of... Uh, the Netherlands, and he was brought in to overthrow his own father-in-law, who was James the Seventh of Scotland, also known as James the Second of England. And he was a Roman Catholic, and a lot of people didn't like that, so they got rid of him. And that was the beginning of the Jacobite uprisings, because if you supported the restoration of James, which is Jacobus in Latin, then you were a Jacobite which is where the word Jacobite comes from. So sometime between 1688 and about 1702. So over 300 years old. And don't worry, I'm still not being shot at. Another coin contender. 85, 86. We're out and we're still loud. Oh, dropped my pinpointer. Oh, tangled it all up. Right. Ah, I thought we were going to get a clod shot there. But it's not in the big clod. It is somewhere there. 
Or is it in the clod? No, it is in the clod. Nope, my pinpointer's going nuts. So it's not in the clod. Ah, it is a coin though. Ha ha! I'm literally, let me just see how far away I am. Look, that's the coin. That's the William the Third, And that's that big circular buckle looking mount. And this could be another Georgian coin. Well, I say another. I haven't had one for a while, but I have actually had one today. Oh, I can't even remember. My brain is pickled with all this excitement. No, it's not. It's a penny. Could be Victoria. No, it might actually be gorgeous George. Yet again, my goodness, there might a gunfire going off around here. I can only assume it's a bird scarer. But it is very loud, as you can hear, I'm sure. Well, it's not in the best of condition, is it? Right, I'll give it a wee rub a dub and get back to you. It's another coin. It is gorgeous, George. There he is, looking to the left with his very spectacular moustache. And he did bear an incredible likeness to his cousin, the Tsar of Russia, Tsar Nicholas II, if I remember right. Put a wee picture up, because they do look like twins. Um, and uh, it would be sometime between 1910 and 1936, but the back is toasted. We are uh, going to struggle to get a date off that. But it is another coin, and I have to say, I've lost track of how many coins I've had, so it must be a good day. At last, I've got the Roman coin, I've got the various other coins, I've got the doorknobs. The one thing I was missing was a piece of cutlery. I thought it wasn't going to happen, but it did. We've got a spoon handle. Fantastic. I am getting a huge amount of old aluminium in these, or in this particular part of the field. Ooh, is that silver? Hmm. No, maybe not. Well, it's a thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm getting loads of aluminium. Loads and loads. It's old stuff. It's like 100, 100 years old or so. Pre-Second World War anyway sort of stuff. And it just comes through differently from the more modern stuff. No, I think that's aluminium. But, well, I'll keep it aside just in case. I'll test it when I get home. I'm inside the last half an hour or so, making my way back towards the car. So, come into an entirely new bit of the field that I've never done before. 86, 87. I can see something there, but I think that's glass. It is. That's a bit of glass. There's huge amounts of glass and pottery in this field. It's absolutely littered with it. Probably explains it all the aluminium as well. There? No. No. There. It's lead. Oh, heavier than I was expecting. Is there anything on it? The answer is I don't think so. Just a random, very big bit of lead. Weighs a couple of ounces, that. 84, 85. And mm, bottle top, I think. Yep, yeah, it is. Ah, what a nightmare. Yep, a bottle top. Oh, it's for, it's for ponds, it's for cream. Oil of ole, oil of ule, ponds, that kind of thing. And it's another parasol bit, or umbrella bit, so clearly must have been sunnier here back in the day, or maybe it was just wetter. This is going to be my last signal of the day. 87. There's a good chance it could just be a big bit of aluminium, modern aluminium, because I'm right next to the edge of the field. But we are out, at least. Nothing worse than digging. Aluminium that's 12 inches down. Well, there's something round, but it's not a coin. It's a bottle top. Yet another one. I think I've had about 40 bottle tops today. 
I must have dug 200 holes. That is not a word of a lie. But we got some good stuff at the end, didn't we? What a day, folks. What a day. And as I said towards the end there, I must have dug over 200 holes today. A lot, a lot of junk. A lot, a lot of annoying old aluminium that comes in anywhere between about 45 and 84. So you just can't notch it out. It's just there. Um, but silver thruppence on the first hole about halfway through I got the uh, second silver and then to top it all off a Roman silver which is probably going to be around 1,900 years old from the man who built the wall well not personally but he made it be built he told them to build it um, so I'm going to show you off everything in the light box at its very best. I've no idea how many coins I got. It could be six, could be eight, could even be ten. But there were lots of little interesting finds. So let's go and take a look before I get shot. I'm afraid that we have run into some technical difficulties, which is that I am away with work and I have forgotten to put the coins and items in the light box and film them before I left. So unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until I'm back. But don't worry, I will put them up as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed what was yet another epic day. That's been some great finds recently. A Roman brooch for me. Martin got that hammered coin, which, oh, is is unbelievable. Unbelievable coin. I think it was King John, if I remember rightly. But uh, just an unbelievable coin worth potentially quite a lot of money as well um, and then obviously I've had a few good hammered coins myself um, or sorry one good hammered coin along with the uh, George the Third silver and then today a Roman and this field as I say produced that massive big coin which I think is a big bronze Cistercius last week so anything seems to be possible we've got some fantastic permissions and I'm just sorry that the other guys couldn't make it out today. Albert did phone me when I was out. I didn't realise because my microphone was plugged in. Tried to call him back, but no answer. So hopefully I'll catch up with him sometime in the next few days. Right, if you like what you see and you're not already subscribed, then please hit the button. And hopefully I'll see you on the next dig. Take care and thanks for watching.